Hey, business building warrior, this is Jim. Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I'm so glad you're joining me for today's episode. This is one of those episodes that is going to have a lot of appeal for anyone from very beginner. Maybe you've never sold anything on e-commerce online before ever, all the way up to some of our more advanced students that I think this will be really beneficial for as we kind of identify some of those stages and steps and some of the opportunities that are now open to you that you may not realize now that you've grown your business to a significant level. So this is a little bit of something for everyone with an emphasis towards the beginning of the show on those who are towards the newer side of growing their Amazon business. Now, as a reminder, just to kind of set the table, you've heard me say these things many times if you've been around a while, but bear with me for a couple minutes. There's some new people with us today. So if you're brand new around here, why do we talk so much about the Amazon replens model versus all the other models you might've heard so much about? Well, perhaps the best way to sum it up is there's only one model on Amazon for growing a business that has the characteristics of a model that we can take a lot of pride in teaching you as you begin your Amazon journey, because we know that the high odds of success are there for you. And this is one of our coaches on our team that came up with this originally. We talk about it a lot in our community. We call it the low, low, high features of the Amazon Replens business. So let's contrast the low, low, high features of the Amazon Replens model with the high, high, low of literally every other approach that you could take to selling on Amazon or any other business that we're aware of that you could launch for that matter. So what do we mean low, low, high, 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 low? What is that? The replens model isn't like the other models because most other models in any business, any franchise, any Amazon business opportunity, any other business opportunity you're considering, the vast majority of them that we're aware of have the following character traits. Very high risk at the beginning, very high cost of startup, high learning curve, high barrier to entry, high technological challenges. They're high in a lot of ways. They're high on the scale for all those things. And very low odds of success, ultimately. You can flip that around for the replens model that we teach here, though. That's why we're so excited about it. Because now we've got a model with a low barrier to entry, low costs, low learning curve, very low technical skills, new skills that you don't have needed, and very high odds of success, simply because... It's kind of like a right place at the right time type of business. Amazon is exploding. They need help filling their shelves. We teach you how to find those spaces on Amazon shelves that are underserved where you could make a profit helping fill those shelves with easily sourced products. That's the Amazon replens model. It is the base model that we teach around here, meaning it's the starting point. Many people stay there and build multiple seven-figure businesses and never do anything else. That's great. A lot of other people use that as a launching point. I'll spend more time towards the episode conclusion today talking about that, something for our more advanced sellers who maybe have been on this road for a while and are starting to wonder, what else could I and should I be doing with these skills I have? I'll talk about that a little bit towards the end, okay? But <clears throat> let's start here. Now that we've set the table, why replants of all the different ways you can make money online, all the different Amazon seller strategies you hear, heard out there, why replants? I've just told you the basics of that. If you don't quite believe me yet, that's cool. Be skeptical, please. Anytime anyone's talking to you about building a business online, launching a business, e-commerce, be extremely skeptical as long as you need to be before you start paying attention to that model and paying them money. So if you're still skeptical, you're still new around here, please listen to 10, 15, 20 podcast episodes where we interview our students who were formerly clueless newbies who now have incredible businesses I would say all of our episodes where we have an interview are students who are doing the replens model. 99% of them are. And of those hundreds of interviews you can hear, about 80% of them are people who are now succeeding at a high level. We have another 20% or so people who are still struggling. We've heard from many listeners to this show that say, I love those episodes when you talk to someone who's been doing it a few months and they're still struggling and you help talk them through maybe some of the issues they're facing and help them get them hopefully over that first hump of starting to see some results. But it's about an 80-20 split. We've got so many great success stories, about 1,600 tagged posts 
in our free Facebook group. You can go to silentgym.com and get a link to that group and join us and see for yourself all these tagged posts of people talking about their great results. Those people oftentimes become podcast guests, share their stories. You can learn a lot from them. That's the validation that you're probably waiting on is I want to see some people who are doing this. I want to meet some people who are succeeding and and also struggling and figuring it out. I want to hang out with those people. That can be very validating. So don't just listen to me. Come experience the group. We've got about 72,000 people in there, tons of success stories, hundreds of podcast guests on this show. If you're new, scroll back in time, listen to those episodes, which by the way, a little tip for you. If you're new to our podcast around here, you're listening to one of the more recent episodes, hopefully right now, as you're hearing this, that's the best way to consume our podcast. The new stuff takes priority. When a new episode drops, be sure to catch it because sometimes there's time sensitive things in there. And then take your time and scroll back through some of the older episodes too. Plenty of good stuff in there. We've even deleted out over time concepts that just don't work anymore. They've become irrelevant. So you can trust as you go through it. Unless we missed something, which could happen, contact us if that's the case. Something that's become irrelevant, an old website or something that we were talking about you know, three or four years ago, let us know. But the older episodes contain a lot of evergreen content as well. It'll give you, it's going to be very relevant for you today, just as much as it was back then. <clears throat> Those are the episodes we like to hang on to and continue to keep in the catalog. It's all at silentgym.com. You can go listen to all those episodes. Okay, let's get into today's content. So the first few sales you make on Amazon, what's it going to look like? What am I going to sell? After that, say you've sold 10 items or so. What's the new reality start to feel like then? That's like a, that's like a separate stage. You've sold your first 10 items. A new stage kind of presents itself, 10 to 30 items. There's a stage there. And then after 30 or 40 items or so, there's another stage there. Then after a couple hundred items, there's another stage. Are you catching the theme? Life gets a little easier and a little more complex in some different ways as you go through these different stages. So when we cram all these sellers into one big room, 72,000 people in our Facebook group, or we have a live event, it's kind of helpful to know what stage you're at, what the reality of your circumstances are based on where you are with your experience level the mountains you've already climbed, the hurdles you've already crossed, the challenges that are coming down the road. And I can't possibly hope to cover all of that on one episode today, but I can give you a pretty good definition of what each of those stages looks and feels like and what you can expect as you move through them with an emphasis being on where most of the heavy lifting is, which is the front end when you're getting started. Because as you've heard on multiple podcast episodes around here, many of our most successful students who go on to be coaches and leaders in our community, for example, they've got their business to the point where they're just kind of managing the numbers and they've got other people doing all the moving parts for them. You can certainly get your business to that point relatively quickly. In many cases, they've gotten their businesses there. You can't start there, obviously, but you can get your business there fairly quickly. That's a very different reality than is trying to find that first item and you're all frustrated and you can't find anything to sell. So let's talk through the whole timeline today. I'm sure I'm going to leave out some really good little details that I probably could have added in had I spent some more time brainstorming today's episode, but that's the stuff you'll pick up over time, hanging out with the other great members of our group, of our Facebook community. Maybe you form a little group of friends and you do this business together. One of the things I love that we've been doing around here very successfully for several months now is all of our new proven Amazon course students, our PAC students, we call them PAC, proven amazoncourse.com. You're offered the opportunity for just a few dollars to be assigned a small group of people who joined about when you did. And that becomes a kickstart group. You meet with a coach a handful of times to help you get your account set up, answer all those newbie questions and give you a good shove in the right direction. It's a great way to get going, but we're finding that those groups hang together. They spend time together. They become friends. They continue that mastermind without the coach. That's great. Go for it and connect with those folks every once in a while, get on a Zoom call, ask how their business is doing and encourage each other and solve each other's problems and questions. It doesn't cost you anything to do that. Why not? So we're seeing a lot of that kind of thing happen. We encourage that. And I'm sure as you go through those different stages with that group, there's going to be things that I could have shared with you today 
that just slipped my mind, but this is a pretty good list. Again, by no means is it thorough and everything you can expect at every level of your business, but these are like the most common three to five things you're going to experience as you hop through these levels. And this is coming after I spent a few minutes kind of brainstorming through the things we hear from each of these seller levels, starting with newbies. Okay, let's say you're brand new. You haven't sold anything yet. I'm not going to talk you through how to set up your Amazon account. I'm not going to go through all the details of the proven Amazon course, but I am going to talk about some of the things that you're going to run into, <clears throat> some of the most common questions and the answers that I give to those common questions. First one is, what should I sell first? Do I need to know all there is to know about replans before I go sell an item? And what do I sell first? No, you don't need to know all there is to know. Set up your Amazon account and sell something. It could be a, a, a Christmas gift that you got that hasn't been opened yet. It could be you know, a book that's sitting on your shelf. If it's not new, don't mark it as new. <laughs> Make sure you mark it as used. List a few books. Start to learn the process of shipping an item when something sells. You're going to have to, you know, these are the early stages where there's a hundred questions you don't even know how to ask and you're going to feel like you're kind of stumbling through it. That's fine. It's no more complex than say eBay or Facebook marketplace in this regard that you're listing something for sale. And if it's sale, if it sells to somebody, <laughs> you're paid and you send them the product. You have to ship it to them. Amazon works exactly the same way. You can merchant fulfill or ship the items yourself. As you're getting used to this process, there's no reason you can't merchant fulfill a few items, list them for sale on Amazon just to get used to the process. It's very important early on, though, that you get used to fulfillment by Amazon, FBA, because you're going to want all your inventory or the, the vast majority, the bulk of it, going to Amazon's warehouse where they do the prepping, or excuse me, the fulfillment. So the customer, when they buy something, it's coming from Amazon's warehouse. That's the beautiful, beautiful part about FBA. And again, we teach all the details of these models in the Proven Amazon course, but this is what to expect those first few sales. So what can I sell? Doesn't matter. Sell anything. List something for sale. Lose a few dollars on it. That's fine. Get used to the process. The other thing we hear a lot of new sellers saying is after they've made those first few sales and they're starting to explore the, the replens models is that, man, I'm, I seem to be gated in a lot of products. I, I go to look at great products and I'm doing my research and I just can't sell this. I can't sell that. So virtually every new student who's in the first, let's say 10 to 20 products being sold have a degree of frustration over the ungating issues. And if you can just trust me as a guy who's coached and overseen the coaching of literally thousands of people, for 19 years, we've been coaching people in e-commerce. For over a decade, we've been coaching on Amazon. Thousands of great students, hundreds and hundreds of recent great success stories. You've heard them on this podcast. And if you can just trust me in this, ungating is not a big deal with the models we teach. Don't get frustrated with it. You will get over that hurdle. At the point you've sold 30 or 40 items, the gates just start falling open for you. You can get into our free Facebook group and you can type in the phrase ungating, U-N-G-A-T-I-N-G, -G, or ungated, U-N-G-A-T-E-D. Just type in that word and see the conversations and see the suggestions and the tips and the strategies. So don't be frustrated. Don't think that you're the one that Amazon's angry at all of a sudden. Why is gating such a big issue? Well, Amazon needs to know that they can trust you before they start letting you sell some of the higher risk products from their vantage point. So they start you out in some categories that they consider lower risk products, lower chances of returns, lower chances of customers being disappointed with their purchase, lower chance of the seller messing something up. They kind of usher you into those categories when you're new. That still represents tens, if not hundreds of millions of products that are viable and ready and profitable you can build an entire replens business in any of the categories that are open to you day one as a new seller. Those categories in include things like arts and crafts, household goods, you know, kitchen, bath, bedroom type of um, items, sports, outdoors, pets, except for pet food. They don't trust you with food yet as a new seller because, you know, expiration dates and there's some complexities there. But that, that list, that represents tens of millions of potential great products you can sell against. And as you begin selling against those products, 
the gates are going to fall open for you in the other categories. And it's going to become so much easier for you to navigate getting ungated. So don't focus on the grass being greener just on the other side of that fence that Amazon has set up. The grass is plenty green enough right where you're planted. There's unlimited room for you to roam around and make great opportunity. And those gates will just fall open for you magically over time where it becomes so much easier. The process to get ungated, for example, for most items that you'll encounter once you've got some momentum will be simply Amazon saying, hey, would you like to request to be ungated for this item? And you click a button, say, yes, I would like to be ungated. And they say, congratulations, based on your sales history, you're now ungated and eligible to sell in this category or for this item. It's simple. No need to pull your hair out. No need to get frustrated. So that's one of the challenges that we hear a lot from newer sellers. So what are the, some, of, some of the other things we hear? I want you to go back and listen to podcast episode 554. There's a really good tip there for anyone who's saying the following phrase. I just can't find anything to sell. How are these people talking about finding unlimited replans basically all over the place? Go listen to episode 554 at silentgym.com. You will thank me for it. It's become a very popular episode where I really break down in simplest terms possible. And I think you can almost detect the frustration that I have in that episode because virtually everyone is overcomplicating it. Anyone who's saying, I can't find anything to sell, you're overcomplicating it. I guarantee you, you are. And that's a significant challenge. You've got to overcome that. You're putting way too much blood, sweat, and tears into the process if you can't find anything to sell because the stuff is everywhere. It's literally everywhere. And I really break it down in episode 554 how it is that we say product is everywhere that can be sold against underserved listings and how to identify what's an underserved listing where can i find inventory i'm not going to break it down here because i do a good job of that in episode 554. another thing we hear a lot from the sellers who are between zero sales and let's say you've sold 10 things this is when this you know 10 20 items this is where you start getting a little freaked out about some of the scary stories you've heard in the facebook groups and on YouTube and over the internet, like, oh no, Amazon's going to send me a letter about an IP complaint. What is that? That's awful. That sounds really scary. Is that, does that mean I'm in legal trouble of some kind? No, no, no. It's fine. Many sellers, the most successful sellers in our community, deal with multiple IP complaint issues every month. They've got Jeff Schick on retainer. He's a great lawyer who knows Amazon policy. You're not taking any legal risks unless you intentionally sell counterfeit goods, unless you intentionally go out there and buy fake Nike shoes, you know, those kind of counterfeit issues. Yeah, you can get yourself into some trouble there. But everything else is policy issues. Does Amazon allow this or not? Does this brand allow sellers or not? And there's this constant battle game, et cetera, going on. And you learn to play the game and you learn that an IP complaint isn't the end of the world. It's going to drift off of your account eventually. No, you don't want to accumulate a whole bunch of them without doing anything about it. But at the, on the same hand, it really isn't a game changer. Keep in mind, we've taught thousands and thousands of students to sell on Amazon. We're aware of a tiny handful of people, fewer than five, who have been permanently suspended over any of these types of issues. And I'm convinced most of those five could have got their account back had they chosen to do so. Using someone like Jeff Schick, not from day one, don't get scared, don't get freaked out. But as your business starts to grow and you start to see some profit, putting someone like that on retainer for about you know two or $3 a day, it starts to make sense. So if you hit one of these legal IP complaint letters or you get a letter from Amazon, you don't know, does this mean I'm not allowed to sell this brand anymore? Should I ignore this letter or not? Those types of things. Don't get freaked out about it. It's all part of the reselling game. I've been doing this for 20 plus years. It's been part of the game from day one. I bought a box of software one time. This has been 18 years ago. Didn't use it, didn't open it. It's still in the shrink wrap. I listed it on eBay. The manufacturer came back and said, hey, you're not allowed to resell our software. You're not an authorized reseller. And I said, well, I can simply pull that off if you'd like. And I didn't respond to them in time or something. And eBay temporarily suspended my account. I was freaking out and worried if I lost my e-commerce business. And then a couple of days later, it all cleared up and they apologized and said, oh, you can sell that. We thought you were trying to become a reseller. We didn't realize you just had one copy. And EB said, okay, it's all cool. Everything was fine after that. But I had a 24-hour scare period 
And since then I've learned, especially if you're new, you can have those little scares. Trust me, it's going to be okay. 99.99999% of the time, those little scary things that you receive, those little notes, messages, alerts, it's going to be fine. Thousand of us have already been through that a hundred times and we're fine. So don't get freaked out over those things. Yes, you want to follow policy. No, you don't want to intentionally jump on listings where it's just the manufacturer selling their own product and you jump in and try to be that second seller selling the same thing. You're just asking for trouble. Is it going to end your Amazon and the e-commerce career? No, it won't. But it is going to be an inconvenience. You are going to have to stop selling that product, take it back, sell it somewhere else. It's a pain. It's an inconvenience but it's not a death sentence for your e-commerce career. So don't worry about those kinds of things. This is for sellers who have sold between 10 and 30 or 40 items. That's who we're talking to right now. Don't get freaked out over the Amazon legal stuff and the IP alerts and all that. It's going to be fine. Trust me, just fine. There's thousands of us doing this business at a high level, eating more of those issues for breakfast every day than you'll see in six months. Stay calm. It's all good. Next. Keepa feels really strange at first. K-E-E-P-A. Keepa. That's the only tool you need. So you could give me a list of a thousand other Amazon seller tools over here. And I'll repeat exactly what I just said, looking at that list. Yes, I'm aware of all the tools you're listing. No, 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 no. You don't need any of them. I'll say no, don't throw them all at me. You need Amazon Seller Central, which is free to all sellers. And you need Keepa. That's it. Because need is a big word, and I take words seriously. That's all you need. Now, you can start to create some convenience for yourself, and you can start to speed up the research process for yourself pretty fast as a new seller using some other tools. But Keepa is it. And if you don't understand why we love Keepa so much, no, it's not because we own the software. I've actually been paid, last time I checked, far less than $200 in total affiliate commissions from Keepa over the past several years that I've spent, sent them an estimated thousands and thousands of users. So it's not about the affiliate commissions. So that tool does things that no other tool does. Go listen to podcast episode 369 of this show. Go to silentgym.com, episode 369. Yes, it's a slightly older show. Yes, I would echo those exact sentiments today if I was recording it today. It hasn't changed one bit. Go listen to episode 369, learn why we love Keepa, why it's different, why it's special, why it's vital to the process. It's the best tool for the job. It costs you about $20 a month to get the paid version. The free version does nothing for you. The free version is useless. The paid version is the power tool that you need to do replens the right way. New sellers often say, hey, it's just confusing. I'm looking at all these, these dots and these buttons and these graphs moving up and down. There's so much to look at. You can turn 95% of that stuff off. You don't need it. When you're new, you just need a few features of Keepa. There's a video at the top of our free Facebook group that I made just for new sellers. Go to silentgym.com, join our free Facebook group if you're not in there yet. At the top of the page in the featured section where we have like the announcements, you'll see a video. It's a little brown piece of paper. It says 99% of all new sellers should start with replens. Watch that 20-minute video. I really walk you through how I use Keepa at a very basic level. Now, there's some very advanced strategies for using Keepa that you will learn over time. You don't need to know those initially. Keepa is a tool that grows with you, the way you can dig into the data and the research you can do and the advantages you can gain over time. But as a new seller who sold somewhere between zero and 40 items, knowing the very basic of the most basic skills with Keepa is all you need. And that'll get you the confidence and the momentum to jump into this low, low, high business model, low learning curve on the technical skills. Remember that? That holds true. There's always more to learn, but getting the basics down pat to the point where you're putting money in the bank as you increase your skill set, that's a very low learning curve, very low tech skills needed. So don't be intimidated by the thousand features of Keepa. Use the two or three features that I show you how to use in that video. That's all you need and you'll be off and running. Hey, sorry for the short interruption, but you're going to love what I have to share with you. Let's talk about seller board. As an Amazon seller, do you know your numbers? Are you tracking your profit and loss by ASIN, cost of goods sold, 
How accurate are your numbers? Seller Board helps you get extremely accurate. Starting at just $15 per month, you can know when to buy products, when not to buy products, which ones are profitable, which ones aren't. You can really start to dial in your Amazon business. Get over to silentgym.com slash numbers and check out the latest fantastic sponsor to this program. So many Amazon sellers in our community are using it. I'm thrilled that they've become a sponsor of this program. Thanks, Seller Board. Go check out their offer, silentgym.com slash numbers. That's a very low learning curve, very low tech skills needed. So don't be intimidated by the thousand features of Keepa. Use the two or three features that I show you how to use in that video. That's all you need, and you'll be off and running. So what else do we hear from new sellers? They get bogged down in the, oh, I don't want to fill my house with inventory, or, oh, I don't want to go to stores, or, oh, I don't want to scan barcodes. Those are all misconceptions. You don't have to do any of those things. You don't have to go to stores. You don't have to scan barcodes. You don't have to be the one that ships the boxes if you don't want to. You can hire a little old lady across the street who's looking for some extra hours, have all your inventory go there, shop online only. So it comes online. You don't have to go to stores and you never scan barcodes with the replin system. Replins isn't about scanning barcodes. It's about finding underserved listings on Amazon and then setting about finding the product to match those listings. Scanning barcodes is an Easter egg hunt. We don't teach that. I can teach you that in 30 seconds. That's not a business model that can scale, be automated. It's, it's kind of the eBay business model, which we love and we still do. I'm not going to walk past $20 bills laying in a clearance aisle at my local Walmart. If I see them sitting there, I'll grab them. Sure, that's great. But I can't build a sustainable, scalable, automatable business based on that model. So yeah, use the Amazon Seller Central app on your phone that you get as an Amazon seller and scan a few barcodes some, from time to time. That's great. That's not how you find great replans, however. That's not building a scalable business with hundreds or more great products that you can go source anytime and sell on Amazon and replenish your inventory as those things sell. That's where the word replen comes from. You got a large list of inventory that you know you can sell at a reasonable profit and a consistent rate. And as those items sell for you on Amazon, you replenish your inventory. That's what a replen is. Now, if you're an experienced seller in our community who's sold more than say 100 items or so, I haven't said anything yet that you didn't already know. And I promise this episode is going to have some nuggets for you too. So let me just speak to those folks for just a moment if you're hanging out with this as I've been hanging out with the new sellers today so far. Hey, thanks for spreading the word with this show. You're doing people a big favor, telling them about the free content on this podcast. Keep doing it. We hit an all-time record last month of 116,000 iTunes downloads, which is up about 30% from the previous month. Excuse me. Part of that was because we took off a big chunk of time around Christmas, but still, that was the most we've ever seen for a single rolling day, rolling 30-day period. 116,000 iTunes downloads. That's awesome. Especially when you consider that we have a $0 marketing budget for this show, meaning we're not paid advertisers anywhere to bring attention to this show. It's all word of mouth. That's it. So thanks for doing your friends a favor and sending them to the newbie friendly content, such as the first portion of today's show, really helping them dial in and avoid a whole lot of those high, high, low business models where they could spend a whole bunch of time and a whole bunch of money picking up a whole bunch of new technical skills and taking huge risks, hoping against all odds that it somehow works out because we all know they have very low odds of that business model actually working out for them. Help them avoid those and jump into something like Amazon Replens where it's all about the low, low, high, as I've already explained. So that's a little nugget for you as an experienced listener to this program. Thank you. I've got something else for you towards the end. I'm going to talk about some of the emails I'm getting lately, some of the excitement that's building around the skill set that you have and how you can put it to work in a, in a cool new way that maybe you haven't thought of before. But let's first talk about that stage, kind of the middle of the bell curve, if you will, people who have sold between 30 and let's say two, three, 400 items. You've sold 30 or 40 items. You're starting to notice this ungating thing that we always say, hey, it's no big deal. <laughs> you're starting to say, think to yourself, man, they were right. Ungating is no big deal. Why was I making such a big deal about that? I'm able to sell so many more things now. 
You're also starting to figure out this whole IEP complaint and the legal issues, you know, with Amazon sending me these scary messages and these health account alerts and all that. Like, oh, you know what? That's all manageable. It's really not that big a deal. Just keep plowing forward. Make sure you're getting good advice when those things pop up. Don't ignore the alerts. We've got services that we offer. You know, we can help you manage those things. So it's really not a big deal. And you're starting to figure out, okay, I've got a new set of things that I'm starting to think more about, you know, that I've moved past those, you know, newbie concerns and fears. And I've got a new set of emotions rolling around inside of me, such as I was really emotionally attached to that first great replan I found. I sold 20 units a week for four months. And man, it changed the financial outlook of our family. I was doing the math into the future and thinking this changes everything. And one day I woke up and that product wasn't available anymore from the manufacturer. Or suddenly there was another seller who somehow got their hands on 3,000 units of that and listed it for 30% below what I can buy it for. Like what just happened? They're getting all the sales now. I'm making a sale a week at my price instead of making you know a bunch of sales every week. What happened? And you're emotionally vested in a handful of good sellers. You'll see that. And, and that'll always happen. There's always a little bit part of you that that is disappointed when you see a great product kind of run through, burn through its curve, and now it's on the, the downward trend. Although I would say this, once a good replan, always a good replan. It may just take some breaks along the way. Until that product is no longer manufactured, the odds are it'll be back as a great replan for you. Again, in somewhere between two to six months, yeah, check back on it. Don't abandon it entirely, but don't get so emotionally vested that you feel yourself crushed or disheartened or discouraged when you see one of your, at this point, 20 to 100 different replans. Maybe it's one of your favorite ones, one of your top 5%, you know, one of your top sellers. And it starts to, to fizzle out on you a little bit. You'll learn not to be emotionally attached to any of your products. It's just numbers. You're just managing numbers. You're buying low and selling high. When something sells, you go buy it again. Zero emotional attachment. That's a lesson you start to learn somewhere between 30 and 40 sales up to, let's say, two to 300 or 400 sales. Get rid of that emotional attachment. You're also going to start to, to have, be in that window of time where you're making some money. You're putting some profits in the bank and you need to decide a few things. Like, okay, it's time to get an account. <laughs> this is a real business. If you don't have one yet, it's time to do that. It's time to have a business entity here. Like, I want to take care of that early on. Let some of the momentum from your profits help you to check some of those boxes that you should check. Maybe start looking at some tools. Do I need a repricer? I mean, I'm, I'm repricing a lot of inventory every day. I think I'm going to go check into some of these repricers that have helped me automate capturing as much of the buy box as I can for some of my more competitive ASINs, more competitive replans. Some of the other tools, you know, that list of a thousand tools that you don't need when you started, hey, you can start pulling some of those into your business now. It makes sense. You're making some profit. You know, this is the point when most people start thinking about coaching for example. It's like, all right, proof of concept. This works. I want to pick up the pace. I don't want it to be another year of time, effort, and energy out of my own life to do this. I want to get someone who knows what they're talking about that I can work with one-on-one -on -one who's doing the business at a high level. You know, this is where most of our coaching students come from is that got a little momentum. Now, I will say this. If you're brand new and want to start day one with a coach, wow, that'll cover so much ground, so fast, so far fewer concerns and moments of panic and moments of thinking, I don't even know what questions I should be asking right now. You can avoid all that getting a coach day one. We love to see it. But because of the soft approach that we take to promoting our coaching here, we don't ground and pound anybody into coaching. We say, hey, take your time, sit back, relax, get proof of concept. Learn the systems on your own. Here's a bunch of free content. Play around. A lot of times drift and people drift into month three, month six, month nine before they think to themselves, oh, that's right. I could have been working with a coach this whole time and avoided all that guess of guessing and <laughs> had someone who really knows their stuff. That's why we love interviewing our coaching students on this show. So you can see the different stages where people made that decision and how that benefited. And you'll hear many, many stories of people who started day one with a coach. We love seeing it happen. We're here for you. There's no perfect time to get a coach. But if you're in that window where you've got proof of concept, you've sold a few items, and now you're starting to think about what tools do I need? How can I automate these systems? You can certainly use a coach at that point if you want to speed things up. That's a great time to do it. There's no bad time to do it. 
We have people contact us with you know, six figure sales per month businesses and they want to coach. We've got coaches that can help you get to whatever that next level is for you, regardless of where you are. We've got coaches that specialize with brand new sellers. Maybe you spend some episodes with them, your business grows, you spend a, a few sessions with a more experienced coach after that. As your business grows, our team grows with you. So that's a good way to think of it as well. And once you're a coaching student, we're always going to take your call and do whatever we can to help you. It's not like you have to ration out those scheduled calls. We're always here for you. We've got people we coached 19 years ago still reaching out to us, and we're always thrilled to hear from them and to help them out however we can. So there's no need to time out your coaching experience. But at that point where you've sold 40 to a couple hundred, 300 items, hey, that's a really, really good time to jump in and get a coach. So that's part of what the uh, the moving parts look like for someone with zero sales to just a few, up to maybe a couple hundred, a, a few hundred. One of the other points I wrote down was um, you want to start thinking about automation at this point. You don't need to think about automation day one. You need to learn the system, do it yourself. Maybe you hire a friend across the street kind of thing to do some of your prep and ship work once you know the basics there. So they're getting paid to put tape on boxes and you don't have to do that part if the inventory is coming to your house. You could use a prep center. All of our international students, by the way, start off day one needing a prep center. Remember I mentioned prepcenternetwork.com? That's the large list, several hundred at this point, if I recall prep centers around the United States, around the world, where they'll receive your shipments for you and do the prep work for you and send the stuff into Amazon with your labels on it. Well, it could just be a neighbor across the street when you're small. But the time to start thinking about automating and building systems isn't once you're running yourself into the ground, working this model 70, 80 hours a week and trying to find some spare time to, to hire the right person. Don't wait till you get to that level. Once you're seeing the proof of concept, start thinking, how can I automate this? Start asking yourself this question. Am I the only person that could be doing what I'm doing right now? It's a profitable activity. I'm making money. I need to bring somebody else in. This is the point where you've heard on several other podcast episodes. If you've listened to more than say 20 or 30 episodes of this show, you've heard me say before, you want to be doing the things that only you can do once you have profitable systems. And the first person you should hire especially for this model, but this is true for all businesses, is someone who puts more money in the bank. Not a convenience hire that frees up a little bit of your time, but somebody who puts more money in the bank. Teach them how to go out and hunt for underserved listings. That's the first hire. Quite often, the, it makes the most sense for the first person you bring into your business to be a virtual assistant who researches just for you, not a list that's shared with 50 other sellers, not even if it's just one of these super exclusive lists that's supposedly only for five or 10 people. Well, those lists end up getting shared. That's why we don't promote and endorse lists around here, buy lists. No, we, we promote and endorse training your own virtual assistant to work on just your business, not working for a bunch of other sellers. We actually offer a service that does that for you where we will find and vet and train and test and tweak and test again and make sure that they're ready to go. Virtual assistants that charge $4 per hour and work for one seller. That's part of the program. They agree to work for just one seller. So then we assign them to you and you pay them directly $4 per hour and they send you directly, not to us, to you, the products that they're finding for your business and no one else sees those products. Now, the nature of Amazon is such that anybody can see what anybody else is selling. So it's not like it's super top secret, but you certainly don't want your entire, <laughs> excuse me, your entire replant catalog showing up on a buy list in front of a whole bunch of other users who are picking through it, looking for the great winners. Now, another caveat, if you find a winner, that doesn't mean it's yours. A winner, by definition, in the replens game is an item that's being sold by other sellers already. You're stepping in alongside of them and getting part of that game. Go listen to podcast episode 554. I illustrate that very, very well. I've encouraged you to do that a couple of times now. I think I talked you through it really well in that episode. Those are some of the things you start thinking about as you get to that 40 to 200 items sold, total items sold. And you're well on your way to having a sustainable business. You're starting to learn your numbers. It's, it's really important at this point that you know your numbers. That's why one of our favorite sponsors around here is Sellerboard. They're a sponsor of this podcast. You've heard us talk about them a lot. You can really start to dial in your numbers. And know 
which of your products are good and which ones you should probably move away from. Don't just guess. Just because you're seeing sales doesn't mean you're making profits. You need to know your numbers. So at the point where you're between 40 sales made and 200 sales made, it's important to start dialing that in because you don't want to just be spinning your wheels, paying yourself minimum wage, working really hard, or worse yet, burning through cash and building a business that's actually not making you any money. Now, there are economies of scale that kick in, but if you're turning $10 bills into $8 over and over and over again, that's not a sustainable business. You want to be turning those $10 bills into $15 or $20. That's how you build a great business. And you, the only way to do that is to know your numbers. So when we talk about Sellerboard, you can go visit them at silentgym.com slash numbers and see the special offer they have for this community. They have been a paid sponsor for this group, but we love the tool. We love pro talking about it and endorsing them. If you're starting to see some momentum, it's a good time to get it. It's like 15 bucks for the first couple months, something like that, free, maybe even offer in there. I don't remember what it is, but exactly, but it's certainly not expensive. It's one of those tools, kind of like having an accountant. It's one of those tools that pays for itself so fast. So that's a good tool to kind of get into the mix once you're starting to see some sales and momentum. Well, those were the basic steps I wanted to cover. The last thing I want to talk about is once you've kind of gotten through this stage, you've sold between 40 and two or 300 items. You've got the routine. You've got some momentum. Maybe you're starting to see a pile of stuff you don't know what to do with, accumulate stuff you thought you were approved for that you know isn't working out. Maybe you're getting some returns, which by the way, this is a good chance for me to re remind you that we've got a new service in our community, silentgym.com slash returns. You don't know what to do with your returns. Instead of them coming to your house, you could send them to silentgym.com slash returns, the service there, and they will sell that stuff for you on eBay and send you your cut. Pretty cool. So you don't have to let it stack up in the corner of your house. <laughs> so that's where you start to learn those kind of things. Uh, as you've sold a few hundred items, you start to notice some of the some of the stuff you just didn't get around to yet. Some of those inconveniences, the boxes you got to check, doing the stuff you got to do when it must be done kind of stuff. You're going to start noticing those things. It's no longer, the business will start to no longer feel at this point like a constant scramble for profitable inventory. It'll start to feel like building a system, creating routines, establishing routines, hiring the right virtual assistant, using the right tool and software to start to automate and scale. It's a beautiful place to be. And one of the other things I don't want you to lose sight of, and this is the portion of the program I share, I have promised at the beginning, for those who've been doing this a while, after you've sold a few hundred items on Amazon, you are qualified to be a very highly paid consultant for people who need someone with Amazon seller skills. Here's what I mean by that. Now, certainly you can teach friends and family and other people how to do Amazon. It's not as easy as we make it look, I promise you. But that's not what I'm talking about. You can approach businesses and brands that you see on Amazon or go to trade shows or even connect with folks online. You can see commercial, you'll, you know, we've heard people talk about in our group, in our Facebook group, they see an advertisement online for a product and they think to themselves, I wonder if that's on Amazon yet. And they go look and it's on Amazon, but man, it, terrible listing and terrible keywords. And it's just, it's rotten. It's awful. And a whole bunch of resellers driving the price down lower than that brand would like to see. And they, they contact them and say, Hey, I can help you manage that brand. If you'd like, I, I know a little bit about Amazon selling and I'm in a community of 72,000 people that eats, breathes, and sleeps Amazon selling. If I don't know the answer, I can certainly get a great answer for you from this group. How about I take a percentage of sales and manage your account for you? You'd be shocked how many businesses will say yes or even pay you monthly to help them manage their account plus a percentage of sales. We call that the proven product partnering model. And that's a model worth studying provenproductpartnering.com. You can go see what's involved with that course and what all we've put into it. It's also a module that's included inside the Proven Amazon course. We're hearing tremendous success stories recently. I've had some interviews even with some of the people who have really taken that model and ran with it in our group. Basically, they're using that Amazon selling skills that they've developed by selling on Amazon. And they're going out into the market and saying, hey, I've got some Amazon seller skills. Do you want me to apply them to your business, to your brand? I'm happy to help. You can pay me a percentage of the results plus a monthly fee to manage it all. What do you think? You'll be amazed how many people will say yes to that offer. 
And that course, provenproductpartnering.com, again, it's a free module inside included in the Proven Amazon course collection of modules. Because remember, the Proven Amazon course is a collection of dozens of training modules on virtually every aspect of using Amazon as a tool for creating multiple streams of income using the internet creatively. It's all about Amazon. We start you with replens, but there's so many things you can grow into from there. And I just wanted to use the end of this episode today to remind you, if you've got any experience level at all, maybe just a few months, you are now more than qualified to begin having those kind of conversations with brands and business owners who need help selling on Amazon. Yes, that's the agency model. You can open up an agency with maybe just one client. That's great. One client on the side. See how it goes. See what you think. It's not going to be hard to find that one client. I promise you. I've been to trade shows and these are shows where people have no idea who I am. They don't know that I've got an Amazon seller podcast listened to by a whole bunch of people every week. They just know I'm a guy walking up saying this basic, simple sentence. Hey, what do you guys think of Amazon? 90% of the time, they're going to give you an answer that has something to do with frustration. 90% of the time, frustration. Like, oh, Amazon sellers. You're another Amazon seller, right? Yeah, we're hearing from so many Amazon sellers. Like, well, yeah, I am. But I also help brands represent themselves on Amazon so they don't have to deal with all the headaches. Like, oh, really? Okay, we haven't heard anyone talk about that before. What kind of things can you do for us? I can help make sure your minimum advertised pricing is honored. I can put you in charge of your own brand, get your brand registered. I can help you create creative bundles, make sure your keywords and listings look great. And even if you don't know how to do all those things, guess where you can learn how to do all those things? Prove an Amazon course, partner up with somebody who does know how to do those things in our group dive into the Facebook group, ask the questions. But those are the kind of things that that brand is going to love to hear you say. Really, what's your fee schedule? What do you charge? I'll charge you a little bit each month. You know, we can talk about that, but I'd love a cut of the sales that I help you make. That's it. So whatever check Amazon sends you, I get a cut of that. That's kind of the the basic agreement. If that's something you guys would like to talk about sometime, about 80% of the time, Remember, I said 90% of the time, they're going to have some frustration with Amazon. Some companies have it figured out. No, we got that all dialed in. We've got an in-house person. Sales are great. 90% of the time, they're going to have some frustrations. Even the ones who say it's all dialed in and going great are probably making it up because Amazon's a very frustrating place for literally everybody who's selling there. There's frustrations constantly. So if you can be the one to help relieve some or most of those headaches, you can get paid very well to do it. And I just wanted to remind All the business building warriors who listen to this show who have more than a few hundred sales on Amazon, a few hundred items sold, you're ready to start talking to brands and businesses about those services. And I've gone to shows, like I started to say, I've talked to many booths and gotten many eager responses where if I had the time and the ambition to pursue having multiple accounts, I could easily at this point it would definitely help when it came time to close the deal. If I told them, hey, by the way, I've got a podcast, a whole bunch of people have been doing this for 20 years, et cetera. The advantages that you think I have that you don't have, but I'm telling you, even with a few hundred sales made, you've got all the authority and the competence you need with this community supporting you to approach them every bit as boldly as I do and get some clients. Another stream of income using Amazon creatively. All right, that's an episode. I'm going to wrap it up here. It's been great hanging out with you today. Thanks for spending some time with Silent Sales Machine Radio. I'm your host, Jim Cockrum. On behalf of the whole team that helps put these things together, God bless you, business building warrior. We're in your corner. We're here for you. We can't wait to have another great episode with you very soon. I'll talk to you then. Hey, thanks for hanging out today. Before I let you go, one short reminder. We are so grateful to our new sponsor to this program, Seller Board. If you haven't checked them out yet, get over to silentgym.com slash numbers. This is the software that tells you if you're profitable or not. It helps you track all of your expenses, your KPIs, sales, refunds, advertising costs, all of it, profit, loss. This is tremendous software that fills a gap in the marketplace. Many successful sellers in our community are using this tool to help them know which of their products are profitable and which ones aren't. You'll love Sellerboard for just $15 a month starting. You can really dial in and know how your business is doing. Silentgym.com slash numbers. Talk to you next time.